Jeremiah chapter 12. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee. Yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. And that's what's going on. Judgments of God. Wherefore does the wicked I'm sitting here. Wherefore does the way the wicked prosper? And that's a good question. You know, I, I'm at my Christian standpoint in my life, being saved for 34, 35 years. And I look around and, <laughs> you know, the wicked look like they're doing well. They have the appearance of Things are well. And as a Christian who studies and reads his Bible, I got to look at them, and the Bible says, fret not, envy not. Job writes about this. Jeremiah writes about this. David writes about this. And we have taken our eyes off of the eternal, and we put it on the temporal. They look so great. They look like they're doing well. They look like they're having a party. They look like they're enjoying everything. And then they die without Jesus Christ. And they enter eternal life into a place called hell where I'm never going. I couldn't go to hell if I wanted to because I'm saved. Wherefore are all thy happy? Says wherefore are all they happy that deal treacherously? They won't be happy at the great white throne judgment. They won't be happy at the judgment seat of Christ. They won't be happy when they stand before a holy and righteous God. And what seems unfair and not right, and incorrect living on this earth today with the power of God and the power of Satan and the power of man that one day either judgment God will make things right. Thou has planted them And it calls the order what I something I think about that God warned Adam about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Who planted that tree? Did God plant that tree? Did Satan plant that tree? And that these wicked, treacherous people are a product of God. They were conceived with a husband and wife, a male to female. Life comes from God. The Bible says God maketh rich, God maketh poor, God promoteth, and God demoteth. God set up Pharaoh to be the leader of Egypt to help Joseph and to keep the children of uh, Israel alive. A blessing. God set up the ruler Pharaoh to treat the children of Israel with rigor and hard service and killing the male children. God set that up. God set up President Trump. God set up President Biden. God set up Carter. Reagan and all the presidents. And if any of those presidents and any of the kings and queens have been set up by the devil, Matthew 4, Luke 4, or Mark 4, it's at the permission of God. And they have taken root, they grow. And it's likened them to a plant, a tree. And Jesus said that, that 
that the father went out and planted wheat. And in the middle of the night came the enemy and planted tares. And that there are people who have been planted by Satan. And not by God. And there have been people planted tares by God. And there have been people planted because they had sexual relations with each other and produced a child. And you say, well, what biblical proof do you have for what you just said? And the Lord caused David to number Israel. And Satan caused David to number Israel. You're in a realm of who did it? Who done it? God, the devil, or man? They bring forth fruit. Jesus said, wherefore by their fruit you should know them. If their fruit is good and, and delicious and, 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 and joyful and unpolluted, it's a fruit of God. If the fruit is rotten, causes your belly to get sick, or even poison, it's the fruit of the devil. And if it's a fruit that's shiny and bright, and look how great that fruit looks, that's the fruit of, of pride and arrogance of man. Again, of the devil. How do I know if that person say, what gives me the right to judge somebody, whether they're saved or not, their fruit? And even then I could be wrong. I was talking to a Christian today and we were talking about another man who professes to be saved. And yet he cusses us out. He tries to stop the preaching. He thinks that we're anti-Semitic. And blah, 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 blah. And we both look at that man like, really? <laughs> How you act, your conduct, your character, what you're doing, what you're saying, what is coming out of your mouth. I have doubts about your salvation. You see, we're not saved by works, but our salvation is backed. Not saved, our salvation is backed by our work. And when you're involved in the devil's way, the worldly way, and you don't show any sign of repentance, you don't you may sin, but you're not sorry for your sins, and you alibi your sins. That's not how a Christian acts. I have seen a thing recently, you know, oh, this person got saved, or oh, this family got saved. And that family, that person has not testified themselves. Listen, I got saved on a Saturday. Sunday morning I was in church. Anybody got anything to say? I raised my hand yesterday. I stood up and said, yesterday, April 25th, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. With my heart I believed unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you can't speak up for what Jesus Christ, what God has done through you at Calvary. You can't speak up. You can't tell others. Are you saved? I mean, telling your mouth others about what Jesus Christ has done for you, that's a requisite of the fruit of salvation. Reading your Bible is a fruit of salvation. Prayer for others is a fruit of salvation. Trying to find a good church, and that's hard today, is a fruit of salvation. Showing love, showing for God's love, is a fruit of salvation. Getting your family together at Bible time and prayer time, that's a fruit of salvation. Going out and tell others about Jesus Christ, about heaven, about hell, is a fruit of salvation. Being honest at work, being honest with your taxes, being an honest person is a fruit of salvation. 
Wherefore, by their fruits, we should know them. Thou art near in their mouth. That's a, I mean, is, is that a Roman Catholic? <laughs> Jesus is near my mouth. No, that's not the kind of atmosphere. And far from their reigns. I'm a Christian. I go to church. I, I, I let my light shine. But is God directing your life? Are you, are you allowing God to put a direction and a path before your feet? Or are you going any, any which way you want to go? And when you read Pilgrim's Progress, and I advise you to read Pilgrim's Progress, there are many characters in that book. They go whatever way they want to go. And it's usually to destruction. One man goes off to, I think it's a gold mine. Another one goes off into a pathway that just wanders. And yet there were three men that set forth in the way of God. One was taken by martyrdom. And two crossed that river into, into the celestial city. There are people, I'm a Christian, with their mouths and who directs them, who guides them, is not God, it's themselves, or it's the devil. That's not a mark of somebody following Christ. Again, the, the Christian verse for that is, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. But thou, O Lord, knoweth me, Jeremiah. Thou hast seen me and tried my heart toward thee. Now, when we go back, it's one of the very first verses I learned, Jeremiah 10, 24. O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thy anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Now, with that, if Jeremiah is trying to do right with the Lord, okay. And Jeremiah, as much as the Christian would look at their lives, and you would do this in the Old Testament, as you would do this in the church age, you will look at your sins. And the Old Testament, you would, okay, do I bring a lamb? Do I bring a ram? Do I bring a, a sheep? Do I bring, what do I bring for my sins? Do I bring a turtle dove? And the Christian is, when he looks at his sins, we bring the blood of Jesus Christ. It'd be great for us to judge ourselves, which Jeremiah does, than to have God chasing us. It'd be great for that child to walk in the kitchen and there's those cookies. Well, I'll tell you what, mom said I couldn't have a cookie. And if I take a cookie, I know dad is going to go across my behind. I'll tell you what I know. I know stealing a cookie is wrong. I'm going to turn around. I'm just going to, I'm going to say, mom, can I, can I have at least one cookie? Can I have one cookie? Because I've thought about stealing it and... I, I don't like what happens when I steal a cookie. Can I have one cookie? That, that, that child has looked at his life. He's looked at the circumstances of his life. And he says, you know what? I don't want to be chastised. I think maybe if I just ask. And the worst thing mom could say, got to wait for you after dinner. Or son, after the party, whatever those cookies are made for. If there's any left, you can have some. Or... Hey, at the party, when, when the relatives come over, whatever, you can have a cookie then. You know? A lot better getting them to behind. And tried my heart toward thee. Put them out like sheep for the slaughter. And we're looking again at the, the family of Antioch, the priestly city in Benjamin. Every tribe of Israel gave to the priest a land 
Because the Levites were not given a land of possession. Jeremiah comes from Antioch. And that was a city of the priests. And Jeremiah in the last chapter is learned by God. Like Jesus knew his own family. And I mean family, his own hometown. They want you dead. Jeremiah, your hometown wants you dead. Jesus, your hometown wants you dead. Paul, the very Jewish people you love and care and pray for and try to win, they want you dead. Peter, the Jewish, the Jewish people, you know, remember when you were against Cornelius, the Jewish people want you dead, your family. Listen, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Even Paul amongst the church said, Have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? Christianity is it, it's not love, it they hate you. If many love you, you're doing it wrong. That's the Bible. I'm not saying that no one's going to love you. I mean, at the farmer's market, we come to realize we got people that love us down there and they respect us and they have offered us things. And, and I guarantee there are people who pray for us. They love us. And then on the other hand, there are people who hate us. Prepare them for the day of slaughter. Now look at chapter 11, verse 19. But I was a lamb or an ox that was brought to a slaughter, and I knew not they had devised devices against me, Antioch, saying, Let us destroy thee, the tree, the fruit thereof. Let us cut him off from the land of the living. His name may not be. His name may be no more remembered. That's the people of Antioch saying they want Jeremiah dead. So what is Jeremiah's response? Oh, righteous thou art, O Lord, when I plead with thee yet, let me talk of thee of the judgment. Wherefore does the way of the wicked prosper? And verse 3, we finally realize, we know who Jeremiah is talking about, his hometown. God, if they want me dead and they're not doing right, why are they living? Come on, God, am I not a child of God? Am I not obeying what, what you told me to do? Wipe them dead, kill them all. You say, well, wait a minute. What person of God would have that to say? Did not James and John say, Jesus, because they reject you, aren't you going to call fire that came down like Elijah? And that stopped Jesus in his tracks. And you know what one of your tendencies is going to be? Is to your enemies. You're going to want, Lord, kill them. Lord, strike them dead. That's your human nature. That's your flesh. We've got an enemy at the, at, at the farmer's market. I pray for his soul. I pray for him. I pray for his wife and his family. Not because Jesus commanded it. It's because, you know, the heart that God's given me for salvation. In the eternal life, I know that guy continues to reject Jesus. He's going to be in hell. And that's going to be far worse than what he's in today. But you find this in David, and you find this in Jeremiah, and you find this in the Old Testament saying, kill him, kill him. And yet the, the, the law is anybody that curses the Jew gets cursed. And it's funny that a Jew is cursing a Jew. I said, a Jew is cursing a Jew. That's trouble. The priests of Antioch, Jewish, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Levi, is cursing one of their own. Doesn't that just blow your mind? Is that a double curse or what? Babylon is going to come to, to uh Judea and Jerusalem, they're going to wipe 
Judah and Jerusalem are. They're going to take captives back to Babylon. And God's going to say, all right, Belshazzar, day of reckoning. You cursed that Jew. Now I'm going to curse you. Jeremiah, at his own people, is angry to say, kill him. And yet you never saw Jesus do that. One time, Paul's standing up at, before a courtroom, a courtroom series, and, and, and he answers the high priest, and he gets smacked in the mouth. Oh, why go with me? Why stop? Oh. And he got angry. Jesus didn't get angry. Even Paul, the great Paul, got angry. Jeremiah is angry. How long shall the land of Israel mourn? My pastor gave a great illustration Wednesday night. And just a brief summary is the families are suffering, the church is suffering, and the church is suffering, and the weather is suffering, and when the weather is suffering, the earth suffers. And when the earth suffers, your grocery store's shelves are empty. And people are going crazy because they can't find toilet paper. And it all began with the family. The family makes up the church. The church makes up the nation. And things are only going to get worse because the family ain't going to get right. The church won't get right. You ain't going to have no natural revival. This country ain't going to get right. And friend, I'd be afraid of what hurricanes all that's going to happen this year. You better start praying to God right now for mercy. You better start praying to God for grace. That man in hell said, Lord, uh, uh, Abraham, I want mercy. Paul says, oh, I got, I got a thorn in the flesh. I besought the Lord three times and God said, my grace. You better get mercy and grace from God. Because you're not going to get mercy and grace from the devil. And you're not going to get it from man. You got to be careful. And the herbs of, the, of every field wither. Lack of rain. Too much sun. For the wickedness of them that dwell therein. Man and his sin has caused the destruction. Not El Nemo. Not global warming. Not the ice caps. Man and his sin. And America is not ever going to get right until she puts God the Creator and God the Savior back in the public school. That's not going to happen. Until they put God the Creator, God the Savior, God the Judge back in the courtroom. That ain't going to happen. And you get rid of Mary, you get rid of Allah, you get rid of Baloni, you get rid of this religion, you get rid of Yin Yang, you get rid of your prayer mats, you get rid of facing toward Mecca, you get rid of all the garbage. That ain't going to happen. You're not going to get a revival. Watch this. And this almost completely backs up what my pastor spoke about Wednesday. The beasts are consumed. Animals suffer. Animals suffer because Adam and Eve sin. I got a chihuahua. She's old. Her back legs. There's something wrong with her. And there is this time she's suffering. And I got to look at that dog and I say, what did that dog do? Me. Okay. I'm suffering. My fault. 95% of my ailments, of my body, is my own fault. I'm a sinner. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. 
And when that little dog walks around and is suffering and looks like she's in pain sometimes, and there are other times, boom, she's up and going. What did that dog do? And when that dog dies, she don't go to heaven. She don't go to hell. She just goes back to the ground. And all the animals we see on the side of the road, what did they do? Besides not being quick enough. And there are some people that aim for those animals. Listen, when that animal's dead and he's on to the right of that white line, that's the safe zone unless you've got an idiot driving. And the birds are suffering. But they said, He shall not see our last end. God don't care. God can't see it. God don't know. God don't care. And friend, where we are in Jeremiah, Solomon has written, the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil God. That's written in the scriptures. But who cares what Solomon said? How do you know the attitude of Judah? I don't care what Solomon wrote. Because they don't care what God's speaking to Jeremiah. The church age today, I don't care it's sin. I'm going to do it. I don't care it's pagan. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't care. It, it, it's another name for Esther. It's another name for Mary. It's another name for Babylonian. It's another name for Egyptian. It's another name for Phoenician. It's another name for Rome. It's another name for Greek goddesses. I don't care. I like it. Didn't we read that the other day? I like my sin. I'm happy sinning. Someone told me that something about they, they, they were happy in their sins until Jesus came knocking. And then when Jesus came knocking, that person got saved. I'm no longer, I mean, I, I sin. I don't want to sin. I ain't happy no more. See, only Jesus can change. Now, you're not going to stop sinning, but your attitude. I mean, there are sins in my life, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy it. And there are times I don't enjoy it. And there are times I do it, oh, why did I do it? And there are times, no, I'm not doing it. And then the next day, I do it. And then I do it, oh, Lord God, I want the victory. And then I'm thinking about it. No, I don't even want to think about it. Man, that struggle is going to go to the grave. And it's the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. You're not going to be doing that, shouldn't you? And the flesh is over there. Yeah, we should. And we don't have a, a reform. That man, you know, he swept out his heart, cleaned out his heart. And then the devil got seven more devils. I wish when the Holy Spirit came in me, I wish he kicked his flesh out. But he didn't. If thou, okay, now here's God answering. And God gets kind of cruel with Jeremiah. If thou run with the footmen, all right, here's an army, they're on their foot, and Jeremiah is running with them. And they have wearied thee. Oh man, come on guys, can we stop? Come on, can we take a break? Hey, there's a river of water over there, can we get a drink? Come on guys, stop! My feet are killing me. I can't breathe. Come on, guys, stop! <laughs> then how can they contend with the horses? Uh, they can go faster and longer. God is telling Jeremiah, will you stop complaining? Because it's only going to get worse. <laughs> That's what he's telling Jeremiah. You know, what he's got, you know what God tells me? Stop your complaining. It's only going to get worse. Now, the last couple days, I have had terrible time. Thursday, I was as grumpy. I, I was tired. I was fed up. I didn't want to put up with it no longer. I was aggravated. 
Yesterday, I spent the whole day in bed just tired. And today, Saturday morning, up to the final moment, I had a good day at the farm. My, my, my legs were, I mean, I was wearing my stockings I'm supposed to wear. I mean, I was hot, but, you know, they felt good. And then we went over to the college, and we got halfway through the causeway, and get the wheelchair. I'm done. And then we went to Walmart, and my feet are down there, like, you know, buddy, if we can unscrew ourselves from your body, we would right now leave you flat here in the ground. And then, you know, for my daughter... And went to the bookstore. She got some books, and I got her some books. And she's my daughter. And I, and my butt said, "Hey, you know, there's a seat there. Sit there. No, no, don't get up. Look for books. Sit down. No, no, what are you doing? Look at get sit down. And you know what? My body gets tired. I get sore. But you know what? <laughs> If the Lord tarries, I got to seek God. I, I, this is not the time to complain. So I think, I think if you complain to God rightly, I think God will hear you. Yeah, I understand. I know you got this ailment. I know you got these health, these health issues. I know you're on this medication. Just relax. No, Lord, I don't want to... Re I, 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 um, listen, buddy. <laughs> it could be worse. You want to try your life in a wheelchair? No, 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 Lord. No, no, no. I don't want to do that. And listen, Jeremiah got tired. Job got tired. You know, I, I talked about... There was, a, there was a church I was in in the past. And I said, you know what? I want to die. That's it. I want to go home. I want to quit. I'm tired. I felt like that. And that pastor branked me out, blah, blah, blah. You know Job said that? You know Jeremiah's going to say that? And you know, I hear, I, I, I listen to a few good preachers. You know, I've heard them say it. I don't know what's wrong with that one pastor I talked to. But listen, I have been in a crowd of people... Paul even said, hey, to be absent with the body and be present with, hey, oh, man, glory to God, I'm all for that. And my pastor again said the other night, hey, when, when the Lord's done with him, he wants to go home and no minute longer. And I had one pastor just blow me out of the water. And he depressed me. Jeremiah is feeling the same way. And God says, Wait till the horses come. How are you going to run with that? Well, watch this. He ain't done. Where's the horse? Uh, and if the land of peace, there's no problems, everything going well. I like them time. And the land of peace was before December last year. And before December 2019, when I was married, before I became a whip, things were going well. All right. Wherein thou trustest. You trusted in the peace and the thing's going well. They weary thee. Then what wilt thou do? The swelling of the Jordan. And that Jordan swelled. And it was a monstrous river. Now, and there's one river in Connecticut that we that we go to in the in the springtime when all the winter snow melts. This, this river, this Yannick River, it was peaceful three quarters of the year. But when the, when the snow melted in this time, of the, this I mean, we have seen people's backyard sheds floating down the river. We have seen kitty swimming pools floating down the river. We have seen a, a path that you could drive. And you can't drive on that path. Jeremiah? Now, God knows what's going to happen. Babylon's coming, and they're going to destroy it. You better hang on, buddy, because it's going to get worse. You think it's bad now. Jeremiah's not even in prison yet.
For even thy brethren, the men of Vania, and the house of thy father. All right, brethren, Jews, Levites, and your father's house. <laughs> even they have dwelt treacherously with thee. And that's the story of a Bible-believing Christian. Everybody hates you, and everybody's taking advantage of you, including churches and including Christians. Yea, they have called a multitude after thee. They've gotten all kinds of people to get against you. We've had lawyers of Daytona Beach. We had the police department of Daytona Beach. And they've gone into multiple, multiple, my Lord has gone into multiple cases and, and Supreme Court cases to tell the city of Daytona Beach that, that man is doing right. And they called a Listen, I, I had one police officer tell me every week somebody's calling 911 on us. And I guarantee most of those people are professing Christians. You know how many people, well, I'm a Christian, you're turning people away. You're too loud. Go somewhere else. You profess to be a Christian. Yea, they have called a multitude after you. Believe them not. Now there's another place that, that God told Jeremiah, don't believe your brethren. Don't believe your neighbors. Though they speak fair words unto thee, those fair words will stab you in the back. I guarantee when I get to the judgment seat of Christ, there are going to be some Christians that are going to have to give an account. And what's that account? How come my soldier Stiley Hayward has marks in his back and his butt side and those marks and those arrows and those bullets and those swords came from you while he's going into battle you stabbed him and poked him from the back he's got the million dollar butt wound and he got it from a Christian you want to give an account to yourself And when a soldier was injured in duty, he got a reward for it. I, I'm thinking, I'm not sure if that's what the Purple Heart is. I think that was maybe the Purple Heart. Wounded in action, and I could be wrong. There are soldiers who have been wounded, and there have been soldiers who have been wounded by our own troops. And they end up getting wounded. And uh, rewarded. Many a time I've been told in Vietnam that the helicopters would come over and they would be firing and they end up firing on our own troops. Told to me by Vietnam soldiers who were the ones being fired upon. And I have talked to some of those men and at that point, well, what in the blank do I have to be here if my own people are killing me? That's frustration. That's, I want to give up, Jeremiah. Man, if I got the enemy coming after me, and I got my own people coming after me, that happened in Korea too. Pork Chop Hill or, or Hamburger Hill, forget which one. It's the middle of the night. And they're fighting the Chinese. Some idiot on the American side turned on the floodlights that lit up our American troops and the Chinese had a field day for, I think it was 15 to 20 minutes. That man got uh, a lot of explanation going on at the, at the field hospital. What'd you get shot in the buttocks for? 
Usually that would be a wound if I turn around and ran. It's supposed to be an embarrassing mark. I have forsaken thy, my house. I have left my heritage, Jeremiah speaking. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemy. I don't have anything to do with them, God. I have separated myself. I have become a disciple. I, 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 they don't want to serve you. I don't love them. I don't want to walk with them. And sometimes, Lord, I don't want to serve you. And I don't even want to walk with myself. That's what a disciple is. Jeremiah is a disciple. Uh, my heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. God or the devil? Both are lions. It cried out against me, therefore I have hated it. Yeah, here's a line. Hurrah! You know, people are not afraid of lying anymore. You go to the movie play, and Leo, oh, okay, the movie's going to start. My heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. So here's a bird, a speckled, and there's other birds around that bird, and they hate that bird, and they, they fight with that bird. And Jeremiah says, I'm that speckled bird. And I got all these other birds, we're supposed to be birds, and they hate me. And they're jabbing me with their beak, and they're preventing me to get food. Birds run about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field, come to devour. Ooh, you see the second advent passage in that one? You see Armageddon in that one? Well, there it is. When all the birds and the animals are going to feast. That's the second Advent passage. That's Jeremiah. He's bitter. He's angry. Many pastors <laughs> had devoured the vineyard. That vineyard is Israel. They're supposed to be taking care of the sheep. What are they doing eating grapes and raisins? And the sheep. They're killing the sheep and get, you know, little wine, little grapes, little raisins with, with the sheep meat. Fatting themselves up. They have trodden my portion underfoot. That which is left over, they stepped on. This. They have made my pleasant portion desolate wilderness. Wilderness is no growth. Lacking vegetation. Lacking the means of life. And the pastors did that. Friend, that's the pastors in the churches today. Where they be rabbis, priests, pastors, Sunday school teachers, Television evangelist, whatever their 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 religious title of clergy. The sheep are not getting fed. And what they are getting fed, most of it, most of it is poison. Most of it, most of it is goat food. Sunday morning after Sunday morning after Sunday morning, the sheep are given a diet of if you come to Jesus to be saved. If today you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God is love. He loves everybody. And he wants you all to come to heaven. All eyes closed. The altar will be open. And the sheep who are saved are dying because they can't eat that goat food. It hurts their stomach. They have made it desolate. Who? The pastor. And become desolate, it mourneth unto me. That's God speaking. The land cries out. 
Your pastors have spoiled us, Lord. We are a land of milk and honey, not because of them. We are a land of vineyards, not because of them. We are a land of fig trees, not because of them. Lord, we can't anoint with the Holy Spirit of the olives anymore because of them. The weather has changed because of them. And I guarantee you, most of these COVID-19 and most of these tragedies is because the church has failed. And when the church fails, the families fail. And when the families fail, the church fails. The world is already a failure. And we're going to go in the world and preach to God, but we go in the world. All are welcome. Will you come to Sunday church service? We have fellowship for you. We got all kinds of games and fun activities for the children, for you. And if you just say this prayer, or if you just step forward as my wife or somebody in the church will count your head, because all you are is a number. So when I meet with my pastor friends, I can tell them how many people came to the altar and compared to how many people came to the altar in his church. You're a number. The whole land is made desolate, Israel. Because no man lay it to heart. They don't care. The spoilers are come upon all the high places through the wilderness. For the sword of the Lord, <laughs> funny name for a Christian newspaper, shall devour from one end of the land to the other end. Our national newspaper is to devour people. What? No flesh shall have peace with the sword of the Lord, with the sins of the people. They have sown wheat, but shall reap thorns. That's not the rules of nature. But it's the rules of sin. They have put themselves to pain, but shall not profit. There are people who put themselves in pain. Well, the more pain I put myself in, the pleaser God will be. That's called penance. The Catholics do it. The island nations do it. They go up and down glass to make themselves bloody. They do that firewalker thing. It's supposed to please God. What did God say? It's vain. They shall be ashamed of your revenue. Because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Money. Thus saith the Lord against all my evil neighbors. That touch the inheritance of the land. Which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. That's the land. Behold I will pluck. That's the I will of God. What's the will of God? There's the I will of God. I will pluck them out of their land. It's happening. It's going to happen. And pluck out the house of Judah from among them. It's going to happen. It shall come to pass after that I have plucked them out. I will return. I will return. That's a second Advent passage, but it's also Ezra and Nehemiah. I will return and have compassion on them. See, God's not all finished with Israel, though some teach that. And will, will, will bring them again into the land. Every man to his heritage, the land. Every man to his land. Ezra, Nehemiah, and then the Lord Jesus Christ. It shall come to pass if they will diligently learn the ways of my people. He could be talking about the Gentiles there. To swear by my name. Better be careful what you do with the name of the Lord. 
third or fourth commandment. The Lord liveth, that's an oath, as they taught my people to swear by Baal. That's what they're doing now. There are churches that are teaching their congregations to love and adore Esther and Tammuz and dead bodies. Veterans Day, Memorial Day. They're dead. I'm sorry. They're dead. You still can honor armed men in the services, both active duty and retired. You can honor those that are still alive. Where do you find honoring dead people? I can give you a church name where they put the pictures of the dead people. On their table in remembrance do this unto me. Yeah. Yeah. To the one that suffered and died according to the scripture was buried and arose again the third day according to the scripture. And you're going to put pictures of dead people? Sounds kind of Halloweenish to me. I don't mean Halloween going out trick-or-treating. I mean Hall Halloween, the worshiping of dead people. And you bring food and food to the graveyard to those dead people so they can have a meal. But I guess you don't know what, I guess you don't understand, I guess you don't know, I guess you don't want to know what Halloween truly is. And then on, on Memorial Day you go after church sir, and then you have your barbecue. It shall come to pass, as they will do me, learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, the Lord liveth, and he does, as they taught my children to swear by Baal. Then shall they be built in the midst of my people. It looks like Gentiles. If that's Gentiles, and I'm not sure, unless he, he's put Israel to a different group of people because of their sin, if that's Gentiles, that's the millennium. But if they will not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation. Saith the Lord. That could be the second advent. But to me, and I don't know, I don't know all the answers. To me, that looks awfully close. It could be Israel. Or it could be the Gentiles. It's really, really close. 